I'm with Georgina Woodhouse Hills from the British Consulate in Jerusalem, and today we're talking about the coronation of King Charles III. What special events are taking place at the consulate here to celebrate? Well, at the consulate, we'll be hosting a coronation celebration um, on the day of the coronation, so on Saturday, where we invite lots of our contacts and Palestinian friends to, to come and celebrate this kind of momentous occasion for the UK. So you'll have already watched the ceremony, then you're going to have a party afterwards? Absolutely. We were going to do it at the same time, but we thought everyone might actually want to watch the ceremony properly so we'll, we'll be playing it in the, in the background if people want to you know catch up on the events in London but it's going to be in the evening so celebrating after the event absolutely and are you going to be decorating the consulate up in a very British style oh absolutely we've ordered hundreds of meters of Union Jack bunting that we'll, we'll be putting up tomorrow in preparation um, and there'll be a military band playing and lots of kind of elements of British cuisine and drinks and that kind of thing absolutely uh, and who do you actually invite to these events so normally when we host big events it's to kind of thank and express our gratitude to our partners and our contacts so there will be partners from international and local NGOs there will be kind of uh, colleagues from the UN and other diplomatic missions and of course all our Palestinian contacts as well or at least those who are able to travel to Jerusalem because obviously with permit complications some can't make it now there has been announced that there is a coronation quiche. Will you be eating coronation quiche on Saturday? Oh, I'm not sure what our resident chef has in store for us, actually. We're definitely having a stand with traditional British pies and quiches on it, but I think the flavours are a surprise for now. But hopefully she'll be rustling up that new recipe as well. Now, obviously, for Charles to become king, there had to be a loss, and Queen Elizabeth II died. How did you feel when you heard the news? I think I probably felt like a lot of British people. I was in the UK at the time, actually, not in Jerusalem, but it felt like a huge loss. And I think it was a surprise how much of a loss it felt to some of us. And I think the cues to, to pay respects at her coffin were kind of testament to what a part of British kind of identity she'd become during her long reign. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, her, her loss was felt right around the world as well, wasn't it? Mm, absolutely. I mean, we saw it here. We had lots of Palestinians coming to sign condolence books. We had a service at St. George's Cathedral as well, right here in Jerusalem. And, you know, the expressions of condolence seemed really heartfelt and came from, from all over. Now, we've never experienced a coronation before, so how excited are you about this event? I'm very excited. I, I love a good party and celebration, and I think the British are pretty good at throwing them, especially when it comes to the royal family. I've watched various royal weddings and other jubilee celebrations, so I think uh, the coronation will be just as special. <laughs> uh, with all the pomp and ceremony, does this make you feel proud to be British? Absolutely. Like I say, we definitely know how to throw a good party and I'm hoping we can bring something of that kind of pomp and ceremony to Jerusalem. Yeah. Now, King Charles won't only just be king of Great Britain, but he'll also be king of all the Commonwealth as well. What sort of countries is he the king of? Mm. Yeah, so he took over as head of the Commonwealth uh, upon the passing of the Queen. So that's a group of 56 countries all around the world with, with strong links to the UK. Uh, and he's head of state for uh, obviously the United Kingdom, but also 14 other countries. So that includes Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and also some smaller countries. Um, kind of like Antigua and Jamaica. <laughs> uh, now, King Charles will be anointed with oil from the Holy Land. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, it's really special, actually. And I think something that we weren't necessarily aware was going to happen. Uh, but uh, he'll be anointed with some oil that's been blessed here in the Holy Land, in the old city of Jerusalem. And the oil itself is made with olive oil from the Mount of Olives, of all places, in Jerusalem, too. So it was really special. I, I went along to the blessing that took place in the Holy Sepulchre, and it was a really special moment. Yeah, I was going to ask, was there a very special service to bless the oil? Yes, yeah, so actually the um, Greek patriarch, Theophilus the, the Third, his Beatitude, and Archbishop Hossam Naum of the Anglican Church here in Jerusalem conducted a kind of blessing ceremony in both a small chapel within the Greek Patriarchate and also in the Holy Sepulchre. So the oil was blessed on the, the Stone of Unction and also in the Edicule where, where Jesus' tomb was located. Mm. Uh, and now King Charles also has a bit of a connection here to Jerusalem as well because mm. Princess Alice, his grandmother, is also buried here as well, isn't she? Mm. Yes, exactly. So the olives used to make the olive oil actually came from the monastery where she's buried, so um, the Church of Mary Magdalene on the Mount of Olives. And King Charles did visit here actually in January 2020 and was able to go and visit the grave of his grandmother, which I know was a, an important moment for him in his visit. Yeah, I was going to ask you, he came to the Holy Land just recently. Did you get a chance to meet him? Unfortunately, he, uh, he came on his visit just before I arrived at post here in Jerusalem, so I missed it. But I know from colleagues what a special visit that was and how excited they were to have only the second ever uh, royal visit to the, to the Holy Land.
Uh, does the consulate prepare for a royal guest and does it take a lot of work to actually put this whole stuff together? Yeah, gosh, all visits take a lot of work, whether it's ministers or senior officials or kind of delegations of MPs, but uh, royal visits are on a complete other level. You know, the kind of the security and protocol and preparations take just a huge amount of work. But it was a really important and, and special visit. And I know he was particularly touched by his, his visits to various holy sites and meetings with faith leaders here. Do you get a lot of dignitaries coming from the UK that you have to prepare for? Yeah, I mean, during COVID, things were quite quiet. Obviously, travel was quite difficult. But I think in the past year, we've seen an uptick in the number of visitors. And we, we had our Minister for Middle East earlier this year, Lord Ahmed, who also was able to visit some of the churches and, and locations that Prince Charles went to as well. And Rishi Sunak has said he wants to come as well, hasn't he? Yes, we are expecting potentially a prime ministerial and at least a foreign secretary visit at some point this year. But I think with uh, the coronation and various other events in the UK, it's always quite hard to pin down a date for these important people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is your prayer for King Charles as he takes up this role? I think uh, probably everyone in the UK will be united together in wishing him best of luck for taking on a role that was done so ably by his mother. I think he's had an opportunity to watch her do it and, and demonstrate her resilience and, and patience and uh, good judgment. And so I hope he'll be able to do the same. And I think uh, from all of us here, we hope he comes for another visit as well. <laughs> will a lot of things change in the UK, uh, in Great Britain, with the money and stamps, all them sort of things? Yeah, I think as far as I know, in the UK and also in some of the other countries where he's head of state, like Australia, there are plans and processes is already happening to uh, replace the mint on the coins and change stamps and post boxes and all that kind of thing. So there'll be lots of new royal memorabilia for people to buy. <laughs> very exciting times. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Jordina, thank you very much. Thank you.